Welcome to the second lesson of the last quarter of this year. This lesson is titled, I Want You Back. The amazing panelists will be Marie Nyanumba, Avin Mosomi, Alva Nyandu, and Ashley Silas will be the moderator. The special item is coming from the final appeal. Our sign language interpreter is Asenath Bosibori, and Marie Nyanumba will take us through the mission reading, and it comes straight from Arizona. Be blessed. So today's mission reading, has said, uh, like he said, has come all the way from Arizona. It's about an 11-year-old girl named Sarah who has a fear of ghosts. So she recently joined an Adventist school and kept this fear of ghosts to herself. Eventually, one day, as she kept experiencing these strange things at night, she confided in her teacher, Nancy, and told her about what she was seeing. Her teacher told her that she shouldn't be afraid, that Jesus would protect her. These are evil spirits that were trying to haunt her at night and scare her away. But her teacher told her Jesus was powerful than all these evil spirits and would protect her. So Sarah listened carefully. All she needed to do when she experienced or heard these things was pray and they would instantly go away. So one day she kept seeing these things at night. They came back to haunt her and she was scared. So she hid under her blanket crying but her little sister heard her from the other room and came in and told her, remember what your teacher told you. So they prayed, they prayed together and instantly they felt an overwhelming sense of relief and peace that had filled their hearts. Jesus was with them. He, he leads me. Blessed thought, all oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do, where I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. me. 
good morning good afternoon good evening at whatever time and wherever you are even as you take time to listen to this lesson the title of our lesson today is i want you back so before we begin i'd like our panelists to introduce themselves from my far left my name is marine yanumba my name is Alvin Nyandu. And my name is Ashley, and I'll be the moderator for today. So just before we begin, I'd like my to please pray for us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for the wonderful lesson that we're about to go through. Please let us understand every word and let us take it in and use it in our day-to-day -day lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So as I said, the title of the lesson is I Want You Back. So my question to the panelists, to all of us is when you think about I want you back in whatever scenario your life is in, whatever space, whatever it is you're going through, what comes to mind? Well, I think it's God telling us we strayed away and he wants us in his presence. He wants us to come back to him. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Evan? Yeah, I, I feel like the same way Jesus feels that his holy people have gone off far and strayed. And he needs them back to his place. Um, I think that Christ means that once we were his, then we deviated from his way. Now he wants us to come back to him. Just before we begin, I want us to think about this. Just close your eyes and think about this. A woman shares her heartbreaking story in a banquet in Seattle. She told how John H. had murdered her brother during a robbery and served years in prison in Washington and then settled in, into a life on a dairy farm where she had met him now in 1983, 20 years after his sentence, after his crime. Compelled by Christ's command to forgive, Ruth Young's man had gone to her enemy and pronounced forgiveness. Then she had taken him to her father's deathbed, prompting reconciliation. Some wouldn't call this a success story. John didn't dedicate, dedicate his life to Christ. But at the banquet last fall, his voice cracked as he said, Christians are the only people I know that you can kill their son and they will make you part of their family. I don't know the man upstairs, but he sure is hounding me. John's story is unfinished. He hasn't yet accepted Christ, but just as Christ died for us regardless of our actions of acceptance, so Ruth forgave him without qualification. Even so, she became his friend. So the, the, the general... The general um, topic or theme in this lesson is forgiveness and I'd like us to comment each one of us what do you think about this act of forgiveness after this man had killed um, her, her brother is it during a robbery and if you were in her shoes would you go and forgive her even as a Christian do you live up to the statement that says Christians are the only people I know that you can kill their son and they'll make you part of their family what do you guys think I think it's pure. It's very pure of her to forgive him after committing such a crime against her own. She forgave him just as God would forgive us, which is what I think all of us Christians should do. Mm -hmm. I personally don't know if I would have forgiven him, but at least I would try. What do you think, Alvin? Um, I think this is very, very broad because forgiving somebody who's wronged you, mm -hmm. and in this instance, it it's about killing their own son. You see, it says that Christians are the only people I know that you can kill their son and they'll make you part of their family. I think that this broadly comes from the aspect of forgiveness and most of us wouldn't dare to forgive such a person. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'd like you to read for us the key text. The key text is from Zechariah 1 verse 3 and it says, Therefore tell the people this is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Return to me, and I will return to you. Even as we think about that, Alvin, could you please take us through the what do you think section? Okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, which one of the following challenges will be most difficult? 1, to beat, and which of, will be the less challenging 10 to overcome? So 1 is the hardest, and 10 is the... Um, and 10 is, is the least, least challenging. Yeah. So first, your father loses his job. Marie, how would you rate that? 
I would take it as a one because my father's job is everything. It provides us with everything and it will just be really hard to get over. Okay. Your application to the college of your choice is denied. Avin, what do you uh, think? Uh, maybe, maybe a two, three, because you have been working for this dream for a very long time. And when it finally comes time for you to either be accepted or denied, all, you feel like all your efforts have just gone to waste like that. So I feel like that's uh, number three. Okay. Okay. Your grandfather dies. I think that this death is a very hard thing, so I will read this as a true. I will read this as a true because this is somebody who you've been close to all your, uh, all your life, then they're no more. I will give this a true. Your parents decide to divorce. Ashley? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where I'd put that because it's so important. It's so, so important, but you know, life has to continue in some way. You still have to go to universities and you still have to, you know, pass your final test. So I really don't know where I'd put it. Maybe a four, a five. Okay. Your, uh, your best friend betrays you? For me, that would be a ten. To be the least challenging to overcome. I know that sounds a bit off and cruel, but if your best friend betrays you, you're not connected to them by blood. You can just decide to not associate. What do you think, Mary? I think the opposite, actually, because someone you've chosen who wasn't put into your life automatically mm -hmm. is so important. You were given the choice to pick this person and they betrayed you. I feel like that's very close to my heart and mm -hmm. it will really affect me. So, um, even as we think about um, the challenges, I want us to think about Zechariah. Marie, would you read for us the did you know section? Oh, okay. So it says, did you know that the name Zechariah means Yahweh remembers or God remembers? As it, as it is the case with many of the Bible prophets' name, the name of the prophet is often a summary of the prophet's message what is the significance of Zechariah's name? God, through Zechariah, wanted the returning exiles to know that he hadn't forgotten the covenant he made with them at Mount Sinai when he gave them the Ten Commandments. In return for their obedience, God had promised to bless them, and he wasn't about to forget his promise. So Zechariah's name basically gives us a summary of the chapter and his life work. So even as we... Put that at the back of our minds, Marie. Take us through the into your story, then the out of your story. Okay, so this passage begins with God speaking to Zechariah, addressing the people of Israel. God reminds them of his anger towards their ancestors, who ignored his warnings delivered by earlier prophets to turn from their evil ways. Despite these warnings, the ancestors refused to listen. God asks, where are your ancestors now? Emphasizing the morality of both people and prophets, yet highlighting that his words and decrees outlast them, fulfilling their purpose. The people eventually acknowledged their wrongdoing, admitting that God just had just dealt with them according to their deeds. God then gives Zechariah a message of hope for Jerusalem, declare, declaring that he will dwell among his people again. On that day, when many nations will turn to the Lord and be joined to his people. Zechariah is shown a vision of Joshua, the high priest standing before God with Satan accusing him. The Lord rebukes Satan with fine garments, signifying the removal of his sin. Joshua is then given a charge. If he remains faithful and obedient to God's commands, he will be entrusted with authority over God's house and courts. This passage emphasizes repentance, God's mercy, and the promise of restoration for those who walk in obedience. Amen, amen. So pick a few questions out of the story that you'd like us to think about and answer even as we think about the fact that, you know, God wants us back and he remembers the covenants that he has made to us since the beginning of time. So um, I'd like to ask, what is something that caught your attention in this passage? Avin, what do you think? 
um, the part that says that he was dressed in filthy clothing. Mm-hmm. I feel like this this really struck me because countless times in the Bible, from Lord's time, we see how the people in their time strayed away from God. We see people rejecting God in most of times. We see people, even after Moses delivered them from Egypt, the people still go against God and make an altar. So this verse, this, this part section of filth is really how cruel the people became mm-hmm. even after all that God did for them. Mm-hmm. It's how filthy, literal filth that the people had the sort of audacity to do this to God after all he's done for them. Okay. Okay. Um, what, who else, anyone else wants to add their opinion to that? No. Okay. What do you think is the main point that God is making to the people of Judah? Okay. Um, the main point that is coming here, basically, looking from the story of Zechariah, is the aspect of forgiveness. Like, look at the last passage, the last paragraph in our passage. The angel of the Lord gave uh, this charge to Joshua. This was a charge that the angel was given from the Lord. And it says, If you walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, Mm -hmm. and I will give you a place among these standing here. If he did wrong, then the angel gave him a second time of a second chance. Clearly, it brings out the aspect of forgiveness. Also, there's the aspect of obedience that comes out when the angel is telling uh, Joshua that the moment you obey, Lord will give you what you want. So that's the main point that I take, that if I obey, uh, Christ will be able to sustain my wants. So this, 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 this lesson or this story gives us an aspect of obedience, an aspect of disobedience, and then gives us the aspect of Christ wanting us back. He says here that if you walk in obedience to me, keep my requirements. So that means that we have already not walked in his obedience. We have already not done the things that he requires of us. So then he wants us back. Even as we think about that, we'll head into the flashlight. Heaven. So now the flashlight, the assaults of Saturn are strong, his delusions are sub- subtle, but the Lord's eye is upon his, his people, the affliction is great, the flames of the furnace seem about to consume them, but Jesus will bring them forth as gold tried in the fire. The earthliness will be removed, that the people, but that through them the image of God and of Christ may be perfectly revealed. So, um, thinking about that, I put the verse that says, Let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. So, the assault of Satan is strong, his disillusions are sad, but the Lord's eyes upon his people. Avin, what do you have to say about these two passages? I feel like God knows. God knows all about our sin. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's not... He's sort of condemning us, but he tells us, come to me. I will give you rest. I will take all your problems away. Just come to me and rely on me. Yes. So in what ways did the clean garments that God gave to Joshua the high priest compare to the garments that God had given to Adam and Eve? In this passage, God tells that the vision is seen, and God says, take the filthy garments off, and I'll give him my robe of righteousness. So, Avin, what do you think this robe that is now given to Joshua and the robe that was given to Adam and Eve after their fall, what is the significance and what is the similarities? I feel like the robe, in my opinion, was a chance of salvation. Mm-hmm. We see that in Adam, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, it says, Also Adam and his wife, the Lord gave them phoenix of skin and clothed them. Mm-hmm. The Lord saw their sin. And out of his heart, he decided to forgive them and cover them with his holiness. Mm. He also gave Joshua new clothing. He, he basically told Joshua that, I, I see your struggles and your sins, but I love you. 
I will give you my clothing, my righteousness, my holiness to encamp around you. Yes. So he says that, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. I will clothe thee with fair meter. Sorry, I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. So they set a fair meter upon his head and clothed him with garments. So I'm just trying to say that, you know, Christ is seeing the iniquity of his people. God is seeing the iniquity of his people. He's asking us to go to him, to make up with him, to come to him, to acknowledge that, you know, we have sinned. That yes, there are temptations. Yes, there's everything going on around us. But yes, it is a fact that we have sinned. And we are supposed to wake up and go and go to him and ask for forgiveness. So my question would be to all of us and to the panelists, what ray of hope does this week's flashlight shine on our path? Evan, what do you think? Um, by going through the flashlight, first of all, I'm getting so much courage mm -hmm. about what the Lord can do because he clearly outlines the assaults of, that the assaults of Satan are strong, his delusions are subtle, but he gives us courage that his eyes upon his people. And we know that the moment God decides to give you favor, there's nothing that can come against you. So yeah, I'm getting so much courage from it. Amen, amen. So we're going to look at this week's punchlines. And while in vision, Zechariah sees Joshua the high priest de dre dressed in filthy, tattered clothes, I had, as I had said, something that God would never tolerate. Joshua's manner of dress symbolized Israel's degraded spiritual condition. How does God go about fixing this condition as we read the flash, the punchlines? Okay, so the first punchline says, yeah. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now I have come to the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. So, so what, what do you think about that passage and God's solution for the sin-filled world? So God's solution is to take down evil, um, do everything that he can to free us from that life and that path. Amen, amen. Yes, um, Alvin, please, the next punchline. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the, for the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Yeah, so what do you think about this verse and how it applies to the sin solution that has been given? Um, this verse is very related to even our title of the story because the title is, I want you back. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, Jesus, we are being told that uh, in Acts 13 verse 38, that the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to us through Jesus Christ who, done, who died for us. So we are going back to our Creator as much as we have been very sinful. Amen, amen. The next verse would be Psalms 32 verse 1. Avin. Um, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are covered. What do you think about this verse and the solution that is given? I feel like they should have added, and blessed is the one who changes his ways after forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because being forgiven and running back to the same sin mm -hmm. is likened unto a dog running into a pit okay. over and over after being rescued. Mm -hmm. So after forgiveness, they should be changed after this forgiveness. Amen, yes. amen. Um, we will go through the Thursday part. So... Alvin, could you please open Psalms 139, verse 7 and 12? And as he opens, I want us to think about a time in our lives where we felt abandoned. Perhaps it wasn't after you did a test or, it, or committed sin that you would never do again. How did you deal with the feeling of separation from God, Marie? Well, I can't think of an exact time when I felt abandoned, mm -hmm. but I can think of a time where there was no hope. When I was studying towards my exams, I just had this constant fear that I'm just, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail. There's no hope for me. I overcame this fear by, like faith without action is dead. So I overcame this fear by praying and studying and living the way God wanted me to live, doing everything right so I could 
get what I wanted out of this exam season. Okay. okay. Psalms 139, verse Psalms 7 to 12. 139, 7 to 12, it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely, the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, my darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. So what do you think, Avin, about this, this text and how does it apply to the passage of um, Joshua and the angel in Prophets oh, and Kings? Uh, I like the, the part where he says, indeed, uh, no, no, no. Even there your hand shall lead me, as your right hand shall hold me. I feel like throughout this passage, we're informed that God is always with us. But the, the thing is, God will never force salvation on us. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He does not force his way in. He lets you open the door for him. So salvation, though it's there, it will never be forced upon you. You will have to believe in God. You'll have to reach out your hand, just like Peter did when he was trusting God. When he got out of the boat, mm -hmm. he walked a bit, but then he began to sink due to lack of faith. He reached out. Jesus was there, of course. He reached out because salvation is never forced on you. Yeah. I'd say that, but while the followers of Christ, we have sinned, we have not, or they have not given themselves up to be controlled by satanic agencies. They have repented of their sins and have sought the Lord in humility and contrition, and the divine advocate pleads in their behalf. He who has most been abused by their in ingratitude, who knows their sin and also their penitence, declares, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. I gave my life for these souls. They have... They are engraved in the palms of my hands. They have imperfections of character, but they may have failed in their endeavors, but they have repented and I have forgiven them. So I'd just like to encourage each one of us that we may go astray, we may do things that we never thought or like we never wanted to do, but Christ is there for us. He says that if you repent, he will blot the sins. He will cause your iniquity to pass from you. He will cover you with a robe of righteousness. And he says that he wants you back. Marie, could you please read for us Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7? And, it, you know, even as we read this word, it's, it's talking about, you know, if we walk in obedience to God and keep his requirements, then we will govern his house. These are words that the angel of the Lord spoke to Joshua in Jeremiah's dream. Sorry, in Zechariah's dream. God promised to Joshua and Judah in a palace in his kingdom, provided they remained um, obedient to his request. So what does it say? And even as we wait, in what area of your life are you struggling to obey God? Yeah? In what area are we finding the most difficult challenges to overcome is it the death of a loved one is it the loss of income stop right now and pray ask god to give you strength and the willingness to obey him so zechariah 3 verse 7 says thus says the lord of hosts if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command then you should also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts and I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. So this is a charge that has been given to us. This is basically what God is promising us if we walk in his statutes, if we keep his commandments, if we walk in obedience. The Father Insight section says that as Satan accused Joshua and his people, so in all ages he accuses those who seek the mercy and favor of God. But he who was the hope of Israel then, their defense, their justification, and redemption is the hope of the church today. The spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is placed upon the tried, the tempted, faithful children of God. Even as we finish this, this lesson, I'd like each one of us to give their parting shots. 
what do you think this lesson is saying to you and how do you think you will apply it to your day tomorrow or your day to day life? I think it's calling me to trust in God and know he is all forgiving as long as I repent and walk in his ways. So um, I will try to walk in the Lord's ways and live a righteous life. Yes, Alvin. Um, what I've gotten most from this lesson is even after we sin, the Lord offers us to come to his fold and he will cover us with his robe of righteousness. Amen. Um, from this lesson, I get to understand the aspect of salvation and redemption. Because even if you look at the topic, I want you back. Going back to Christ can be in many ways. You can go back to Christ through baptism, confession of your sins, then forgiveness. So just that aspect of going back to Christ and knowing that he is there for you is enough. That is what is giving me courage today that I have learned from this lesson. Amen. And I just want us to remember that God remembers. Zechariah means God remembers. Every time you hear the, this lesson, remember that God remembers and he says that he wants you back. With that, we will close this lesson and I hope you have enjoyed and welcome back to our lesson three of this October, even as the topic of deliverance is unfolded. Let's pray. Creator of the universe, we bow again our heads before you. We ask, Lord, that even as you show us your plan of redemption and salvation, that you may teach us that this deliverance is in our benefit and you love us so much that you are willing to give your son to die for us. Teach us, hold us as we try and uphold your teachings and walk with us for this our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.